Hi guys, in this video we're going to be going through momentum. Uh, what you can expect in this video is for the definition of momentum, calculate momentum of a moving object using the formula to calculate momentum, which is P is equal to mv. Uh, we'll, we'll just go through the vector nature of, of momentum as it is, and we'll do some examples of that. And then we'll also draw some diagrams and do some examples of initial momentum, final momentum, and change in momentum. Uh, just so that you can get a pure for it. So, momentum is P. It's defined as P. So, uh, sorry, it's given by the formula P is equal to mv and is defined as the product of an object's mass and velocity. It also moves in the same direction as the velocity of the object. So, it's just simply the product of mass and velocity and it's a vector quantity. So, we should also remember that vectors have, so we say, vectors they have two things they have a magnitude and direction also the units for momentum is equal to kilograms meters per second that's the units for that standard international units SI units okay it's quite simple, quite straightforward. We're just going to go through some examples so you can kind of get used to the mechanics of it. So we have an example here. A soccer ball of mass 520 grams is kicked at 18 meters per second towards the goalpost. Calculate, calculate the momentum of the ball. So what are we given? Let's give it up. Let's try it out. We're given first mass of the ball. Mass is equal to 520 grams. But remember, we need to get it into SI units. So divide by 1000. 0.52 kg. Uh, the velocity of the ball is given as 18. Point, uh, sorry, just 18 meters per second. Okay, and this is also towards the goalpost. Towards goal. Right. So straightforward to work out the momentum. We would say. P is equal to mv, mass times velocity, mass is equal to 0 0.52 kgs times uh, 18 meters per second to give you a final answer of 9, let me just check that, I think it's 9.36, 9, point, sorry, 9.36. And this is in kgs, meters per second. Make sure you have the minus one. But that's not the final answer because that's just a magnitude. We need to have a direction as well. In this case, it's towards the goal. And that's your final answer. So it's quite straightforward. Just substitute, make sure you have into uh, SI units and make sure you have a direction or else it's not a vector. Okay, we'll do another example, so the mechanics again. We have a cricket ball, a ball, a cricket ball of mass 160 grams to the batsman at 150 kilometers per hour, per hour. Determine the momentum of the ball. Okay, what are we given? It's nice for that. Given information first. Okay, we have mass is equal to 160 grams. Get this to kgs. That's equal to 0 0.16 kgs. Uh, the speed of the ball, the velocity, is equal to 150 but it's in kilometers per hour. So we need to get that to meters per second. How do you get that to meters per second? So, from, so what you do is, so you can write this kilometers per hour. This is equal to 150 kilometers to meters you times by 1000. So we can multiply by 1000 on the top. And hours to minutes to seconds. You multiply by 60 to get it to minutes and multiply again by 60 to get it to seconds. And this is how you're going to get your velocity meters per second. So velocity meters per second would be 41.67 meters per second. And then finally you just plug it into the formula. P is equal to mv, your mass 0 0.16, velocity is 41.67, and your final answer will be 6.2. Sorry again. 6.67 6 
kgs meters per second and direction towards the batsman towards the batsman sometimes the most of the time actually the direction will actually be east northwest but this time it's given us towards the batsman or towards the goalpost that so that, that takes care of the mechanics that was just some simple definitions and some examples just to get you used, you used to the formula okay let's move on so there's just some def there's some definitions here you know and symbols so the sign here this sign means change in so we have the change in momentum then p r subscript i is initial momentum p subscript f is final momentum change in momentum is uh, final momentum minus initial just remember it's the final minus initial not initial minus final final minus initial so, we can do an example here, just to illustrate how to calculate this. Um, we're given uh, a ball that hits the wall at an initial velocity, as shown by the arrow, by this arrow here, by this arrow here. So I'm just going to go over it in blue. That's the initial velocity, and that's the final velocity. So, we have, remember, so what we required is to get PI, PF, and the change in P. Oh, that's initial momentum, final momentum and change in momentum. So, um, what, what accurately represents this, let's ignore the mass because the mass can be constant throughout, so we can ignore that. So we can just say that the momentum is proportional to the velocity in this case. So, how many blocks is that? That's about three blocks. Three blocks per worth of initial momentum, right? Final momentum is about one block of work. What is change in momentum? Remember from our formula, change in momentum is equal to uh, momentum final minus momentum initial. So, there's a final momentum here. So, we list the working out on the side here. So, see. So, this can also be rewritten, or to make it easier, as the final momentum minus or plus negative of initial momentum. So, this is the way I want you to remember the formula for this. PF, final momentum, plus the negative of the initial momentum. So, if this here is the initial momentum, what would minus PI be equal to? Minus PI would be equal to, would be equal to the opposite of that. So, it would be the same magnitude, but in the opposite direction. That's what it means. Now we have minus pi and we have pf. So we can say that change in p is equal to final momentum plus the negative initial momentum. And that's going to give you, that's your pf, what a block, and three blocks. You have your p. So you add them together and you have change in momentum will be equal to this little bit more room will be equal to a total of about four blocks that's how you get it so it's interesting just note that the direction changed the direction changed I'm be taking the negative of the initial list oh sorry initial momentum we'll just do one more example just to get used to it so it's the same as before uh, except this time we have a, 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 a ball that bounces downwards uh, it has an initial velocity of about four blocks downwards and about one block upwards. So they want you to calculate change in P. So the change in momentum is equal to final momentum minus initial momentum. As I said, we should remember it is plus the negative of the initial. Right. So we have here. Um, so if I just throw it on the side here, we could say it's four blocks down. That's your initial momentum. So what will be the opposite? What will be negative initial momentum? Will be the same same amount of magnitude, but the opposite direction. So that's your initial momentum, and your final momentum is the same. It's given. Sorry. All right. So what does that give you for the final momentum? It will be PF final momentum plus the negative of the initial momentum. So just add these two arrows together and you're going to get 
your change in velocity, I'm sorry, change in momentum will be equal to. Right. There we go. That's about it. That's just to give you an idea of how momentum works and also to give you a feel that and, and to make sure that you know that it's a vector quantity and not a scalar. Scalars have only magnitude, but vectors have a direction too. So I want you to remember this formula here because this won't be given to you. Sorry. This won't be given to you. Um, but it can be easily, if you just think about it logically, you'll be able to get it quite simply. Um, but yeah, it's quite straightforward. Just remember this formula. Remember that you must always have a direction. And uh, remember your units always. That's about it for this video. Thanks, guys.